Hey guys, welcome back to the Agile Development and Better Software Virtual Conference. And I'm really excited, as you can see from my look on my face and the energy, to have Joe Justice here right now. How are you doing, Joe? Awesome. Pleasure awesome. to be here. Hey, thank you for coming along. You know, there's so many things that we need to cover in such a short time. And for those people out there who might be wondering, why is he so excited? Please, just tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Well, you know all about it. I, I'm Joe Justice. I'm a consultant at Scrum Incorporated and the team lead of Team Wikispeed, and we use Agile, Lean, Scrum, beyond software. My background, was I was a C-sharp developer, so a software background, but anymore, it's working with uh, clients in design, manufacturing, engineering, their legal department, their HR department, their board of advisors, to all launch as Scrum teams, and the name we put on that is Extreme Manufacturing. I mean, to me, that's just so cool. I remember when I caught up with Jess Sutherland in 2011 at the reunion in Salt Lake City. And at the time, there were some talks about how Scrum was being used in education, how um, forgotten the guy's name was who was actually using it to actually help all, um, communities make some decisions around politics and stuff like that. And then also at that, I met somebody from the, the defense in, Ministry of Defense in the States who was talking about legislation being passed by the uh, Obama administration that all contracts relating to that had to be agile related. And it's just like, whoa. So, I, and I know you mentioned also about <laughs> speaking to the European Union and how they're now talking about passing some legislation around Talk some more about that. What's, wow, what's, that what's was a trip. On? So in, in 2010, the United States Department of Defense passed a law, exactly as you said, saying all contracts uh, through IT have to be agile. Right. And they put lines from the Agile Manifesto into the law. Wow, wow. Well, it pasted right in. That's big. Uh, yeah, that was, that was <laughs> massive. Um, and now working with uh, some of the largest defense contractors in the world myself, mm -hmm. um, they're having fantastic velocity gains mm. now that they've had to relaunch a sets of scrum teams, right. which is phenomenal. Well, then um, I was invited to the uh, Global Forum and Summit on Sustainability in Paris, France at the UNESCO World Heritage Headquarters. And I was asked to brief the EU delegates on stabilizing the European Union's economy and the Euro currency which I, of course, am dramatically underqualified <laughs> to talk about those financial decisions. Uh, so what I could talk to him about is Scrum. And the reaction was, uh, so here was Scrum and software, and then also here's Scrum for all business generalized, no matter the type of delivery. And the EU delegates' reactions were, that's it. <laughs> There's the answer. Our, our job now is to pass legislation to make the default for business in EU countries Scrum. Instead, as I understood it, when a company asks for financial assistance um, within EU countries, they're asked for um, their five-year plan. Right, okay. And they were saying, instead, we need to make the law asking for their backlog right, for okay. course correction, that type of thing, yep, okay. which was phenomenal. Yep. Um, and so I knew then Scrum is getting yeah. very big when the government is passing legislations to incent it, right? Isn't that yep. a big deal? Big. And then what threw me for a loop is when basically the world's oligarchy Wow! <laughs> summit, the, uh, the Pictet Investment Group in, in, uh, in Switzerland. They put on uh, a week-long blowout party is what I think this is, right. and they invite the world's wealthiest 0.001%. Okay. And uh, they asked me to fly out there and brief those families. They bring in the families at a yep. time is how I think this works, yep. to brief them on the the changes that are going to be shaping their investment portfolios okay and and their profiles of risk and and advantage to their portfolios yep and and they've asked me to talk to them about scrum and how that's going to work uh, across all of their operations they know it has the boost in software yep. and they're saying now across all business wow. and that's when i said this might be getting huge when the government and then the world's i'll say oligarchy is wanting to know about it and as we got to talk about yesterday, the reason why is the difference in success rates across projects. Mm. Um, waterfall projects have a 14% success rate, which makes sense. Venture capitalists, they want to fund 10 companies because one out of 10 will hit, and it needs to have a return that's big enough to offset the nine fails. Yep. So they net net went out. Um, that's what waterfall gives us. Well, Scrum, 
has a 43% success rate. So you have a 350% higher success rate. So the world's oligarchy, it sounds like it's saying, yeah, we want to do that all the time. Yeah, we so want a higher return on investment, like, hey. <laughs> wow. I mean, to me, I mean, like I said, when I first heard about how, how big this is getting, it's just so exciting because obviously up until now, you know, for a lot of people, the challenge has been, okay, it's IT. How do you now take it out? And I know that through extreme manufacturing, you've now found a way or you're presenting it in such a way that it's making it accessible to nearly everybody in all type of industries, all markets in different ways, also including education. I mean, do you want to talk a little bit more about extreme manufacturing and how you came up with it? Oh my gosh, I, I'd, I'd love to, but I should also say how much bigger than me it, it had to have been for it to form, it. Uh, right? I, I'm that. glad you guys get to interview. I, I'm pleased to be here and chat about it, but it, it's a lot bigger, of course. Um, Team Wikispeed, yes. when we were building our ultra-efficient cars. Which we built one yesterday. <laughs> we put one together in here in Caesars Palace Main Ballroom in Las Vegas. Imagine that. <laughs> that was a trip. <laughs> we laid down plastic over the carpets to protect them, and they were drilling, sawing, cutting, grinding. Uh, yeah, wow. So when we were making the first cars, using pulling from an agile backlog, using test-driven development, contract-first design, object-oriented architecture, it was that whole team which, uh, oh gosh, probably almost 100 people flowed in and out during the X Prize. Mm. There were um, 44 of us in four countries stable uh, by the time the X Prize concluded, and they all pitched in and helping figure out what this concept means. What does mm -hmm. it mean to use agile methods, in, in this case, in automotive design right. and manufacture? Now it's a whole bunch of companies, and they're all figuring it out. Right, okay. Now I'm glad I get to work with them, mm. and we update the Wikipedia page okay. on extreme manufacturing, and then Scrum Inc. posts all the data. Uh, that's where the white papers are that come out of working with these companies. Right, okay. What was their velocity improvements? And I yep. got to walk through some of that yesterday at the yes. keynote. Yes. But it's a whole bunch of people wow. mapping these and, and then recording it. And I'm glad I get to talk about it. And technically, I could say I'm the uh, creator of it. Well, at the moment, but it's a lot bigger than me. And I appreciate and <laughs> respect the fact that you're obviously you're giving attribution to, to to the other sources. Like we all know, you know, there's nothing you underneath the sun, right? Uh, so just you know, but at the moment, you're the face, the guy behind extreme <laughs> oh, sure. manufacturing. So enjoy it, man. <laughs> well, we'll live that up for now. Yeah, enjoy it, enjoy it while you can. So I guess now that you've been exposed to such a wider audience who are embracing Scrum, Agile, Lean, I mean, it makes sense from the perspective that. Five-year plans, we know it doesn't make sense having five-year plans. Things change too quickly, so that's a recipe for, for disaster. Of course, it makes sense to look at what you're planning to do, what you're looking at creating in value short-term, what's your long-term goals, and how you're going to actually respond to change. That makes a lot more sense. But based on the fact that you've been exposed to all these different industries and obviously you're at the forefront of this, where do you see Agile, Lean, Scrum, Lean Startup, where do you see it mm -hmm. going over the next few years? Oh, my gosh. It is now, I believe, from coming into these companies, becoming the norm. And uh, the long-tail companies, governments and, and, mm -hmm. and then uh, large banks, mm -hmm. are now scrumming. Mm -hmm. And they've got lean manufacturing disciplines, uh, design thinking disciplines, lean startup parts in their business mm -hmm. as the core part of their innovation engine. Mm -hmm. The tipping point that I believe is happening right okay. now is it's moving from here's our innovative work where we do these things mm -hmm. to this is the way we do all work. Right. And uh, I got to say, it's going to take everybody in this conference to come out and help those companies that are figuring it out right now. Mm. So thank goodness we've got uh, this massive ballroom full of lean thinkers, people who know who have been on scrum teams and know how that structure works, people who understand the agile mindset, mm. know there are 12 agile principles and four mm. agile values and they can try to map them to different types of work mm. because all those groups need it. It looks like we're moving from Here's our innovation process, and that's the agile mindset and the methodologies mm. that support it, to this is the way we do business. Mm. Wow. I mean, that, that's just so mind-blowing. And that excites me because to me, it just means there's so much potential, not just in the commercial uh, place, not even in the public sector, but also in non-profit organizations, right? There's so much we can do for those people who care about, you know, doing, you know being social entrepreneurs or whatever, right? Well, and you were starting to talk about Scrum. Yes. Two, the a group in the Netherlands and visiting, and it's bigger than the Netherlands now, but that's where I got to see it when I got to walk in and, and, and observe an mm -hmm. Edge Scrum class. And uh, 
that evolved, of course, very independently from me, but along the same scrum lines. And now we do help each other. Mm. I take practices I'm learning and I put them in the edge of scrum pool of knowledge mm. and then they help open up their white papers on how to do this at more schools. Mm. But they're finishing the semester 20% early with 10% higher test scores. Wow. K kindergarten through high school. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's a trip. You know, in all subjects. It is. And Joe, really, you know, I really could sit here speaking on, on camera with you for a lot longer. Um, but, you know, obviously the live um, virtual conference needs to continue. So we're going to take this conversation offline. For those people watching right now who might need to well, want to get hold of you, want to find out about the exciting stuff you're doing, how can they get hold of you? So first off, the Better Software Conference, Agile Developers Conference 2014 here in Las Vegas. I'm still here today. If you're in town, stop by. Let's high five each other. Uh, you can reach me at justice at scruminc.com. Uh, justice, just like the word, J-U-S-T-I-C-E, at S-C-R-U-M-I-N-C dot com. Or you can tweet me at at Wikispeed or at Scrum Inc. Also, the keynote from yesterday that I'm lucky enough I got to present, should also be online on the Better Software uh, Conference, Agile Developers Conference website, maybe even later tonight, soon. Cool. Joe, hey, really appreciate high five? you. High five. <laughs> Thank you for dropping by. I really appreciate that. Stay, um, stay tuned or stay hanging in there because I believe we're now going to be moving over to a live streaming um, speak talk. So, hey, great stuff. Thank you.